Take 41. Hey y'all, Jill and Nate here with Whispering Willow Farm. Welcome back. This evening we are in our high tunnel. We're gonna be planting out our first round of Katrina cucumbers, and we are going to be trellising using the umbrella technique. Now, I talk a lot about small scale intensive farming, right? Not being limited by the space you have, but learning how to maximize that space really well. So we live on a little over four acres, but a less than an acre of that is designated to food and flower production, which we grow for our family year round and we also sell through wholesale partnerships and a CSA model that we're implementing this year. So one, I say that to say, if you don't have a lot of space, cool, you can still apply this. We are implementing this method in our high tunnel, but we are gonna show you how you can do this out in your raised beds too, or maybe if you're doing an in-ground no-till method as well. Um, this is just where we choose to grow our cucumbers, but this system can be implemented anywhere. But if you are limited on space, this is a great way to grow your cucumbers vertically and really max out your small space, allow space for interplanting, and honestly, we have found that if you trellis this way and you prune all season long, you will double your yields per plant. So we hope to show you guys step-by-step step how to do it. So the great thing about this technique is that you do not need a lot of supplies, and the supplies that you do need, you can use season after season to keep implementing this. You are gonna need scissors or pruners, um, some sort of twine. We like to use jute twine because we're buying compostable clips, and I like to rip it all down at the end of the season and throw it in the compost pile. However, if you are implementing this umbrella trellising technique outside, I think a plastic tomato twine would work better because this jute's just not gonna hold up against the elements. You are gonna need a couple landscape staples. If they can see what that is. If you can see what that is, we can left them out in the rain. They got a little rusty, but it doesn't matter. Oh my goodness, here we go. So these landscape staples are just these really long um, staples. And then if you are implementing this method outside, uh, do you wanna tell them all the supplies that they're gonna need? Outside? Yeah. Um, yeah, you will need some probably seven foot T-post uh, or taller. And then you will need some PVC T's uh, to stick on top of the T-post and then some sort of conduit, whether that's poly, or uh, aluminum conduit, just so you have something up tall that you can trellis to. Right, so. one thing to be mindful of though when you are choosing that conduit, I'm gonna inlay a lot of footage here so you guys can actually see what this looks like uh, you know, later in the season, but essentially your cucumbers are gonna climb up this twine, go to the top of that conduit, and come right back down. And so it is gonna be you know, a little heavy, so make sure that you are you know, going with a conduit or a pipe that is sturdy enough to kinda you know, withstand that weight if you're not harvesting your cucumbers regularly. We harvest ours pretty small, so weight's not typically an issue, yeah. but that is something to be mindful of. Um, we are in our high tunnel here, so if you are implementing this in a high tunnel, we have got our braces up top. And what Nathan has done, and actually this is a better model, so we uh, practice you know, crop rotation, which means if we planted something in one bed one year, we're gonna flop it the next season. So this bed here was where our cucumbers were last year. And you guys can see we have these two pipes ran all the way down at the top. And so essentially you're implementing something like this um, and you're just creating that, you know, the T-post and the structure in which it's stuck to. But if you are growing in a high tunnel, just, you know, lay some pipe on cro across your T's um, and you'll be good to go. So you guys can see we're just running to, this is what it should ideally look like. Um, if you are only growing one row, you obviously only need one. So in these beds, I'm doing two rows, which is why you see those two uh, lines of pipe. Yeah, and so I ran out of pipe, but you can see that I have started uh, down this bed here, but we will eventually have two two rows all the way down. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it all the way down in case we rotate back there next year. So. With that being said, you can plant your cucumbers and then come back and trellis them. However, a lot of my cucumbers are pretty much at their prime and I could immediately start trellising. So you do wanna make sure that you have your trellising system already in place when you're planting this out. It's just gonna make things a lot easier for you. All right, I'm gonna throw a little pro tip at you guys. If you are using drip irrigation, 
in your gardens, I, which I highly recommend doing it, um, your drip emitters, which is essentially where the water is coming out, is gonna be every 12 inches, which is exactly the spacing that you're going to need for your cucumbers and a lot of other things, honestly. So for me, instead of trying to figure out spacing, I just wanna plant all my things at each drip emitter to make sure that they're getting access to the water that they need. So what I like to do first is to go through, lay out all my cucumbers, figure where I'm at, and then come back through and start the trellising. All right, so here comes the fun part. You get to throw this over your pipe or conduit if you're outside. If you're in a high tunnel, obviously this is gonna be a bit more challenging because it's gonna be a lot higher, but essentially you're gonna want one string per plant. So what I do is I like to gather some string here and then keep the big ball. And literally what I'm gonna do is just toss it over the top and catch it back down. You got this. Yeah, all right, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> So a good rule for me is to bring both sides. If I were to stretch my arms out level, that's kind of where I know. All right, so you can see I have these two here with the side that is still attached to your main spoil. That's the one that you're gonna do this to. And I just create a little bunny ear like that. I wrap it around my two fingers, slide it back through and I have a knot. Now I'm sure there's a, a technical name for this, however, I don't know what it is. Then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut off the access. All right. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that this is lined up over your plant that you're wanting to trellis. You're gonna take this side, run it through that side and pull, creating some security at the top. And then what you have is your string dangled down to the bottom, which once we do all of this, we'll come back and show you the next steps. All right, so you might have some excess to your string here. Don't really worry about that, just cut it off. You do want enough string left to where you can tie a knot. So you guys can see here, I've got quite a bit of excess string. So I'm gonna pull it all the way down to my plant and then give myself an extra couple inches and cut the excess off. And then I'm gonna do the same knot I did earlier. I'm gonna create my bunny ear. I'm gonna put it around my fingers and then pull it back through, creating what you see right here. I'm gonna put that towards the bottom of my plant. Then I'm gonna take this Pull it to the bottom of my plant, take that landscape staple, and just secure it down. Now what's gonna happen is as this plant grows, I'm gonna continue to prune it, but I'm gonna take these compostable clips and I'm gonna secure this to the twine, and I'll show you how I do that. All right, so these are compostable clips I get from Johnny Seeds. Right here in the crevice is where you want whatever twine you're using, and it locks in just like that. So you'll do that around your twine. This is important. If this isn't locked in, then your cucumber's not gonna actually be attached to the structure of the twine. But then I take that and I'll connect it to my plant, which is one, keeping it straight. And as the plant continues to grow, every single week I will come in and add another compostable clip. And what happens is this plant will continue to grow vertically. I'll prune off any side shoots where it's only producing um, the fruit bearing shoots. And what happens is it'll go all the way up. It'll actually climb over the top of the pipe and then umbrella all the way back down. So that might be a hard visual for some of you guys. So I am going to find footage that I took last summer of my beautiful abundant cucumbers in my greenhouse and show you what this looks like. Now, like I mentioned, there are very few materials required. The materials that you do have to buy, you can use season after season. But instead of maybe growing your cucumbers on an arch trellis that you can put four plants on, it's gonna produce what it produces and that's it. I'm literally training my cucumbers to climb up. How tall is that, babe? 
seven, eight foot? Seven, eight feet coming back down. So imagine the production I'm getting out of one plant just based off how I'm choosing to trellis it versus if I chose another trellising option. Now the really cool thing about this umbrella technique is I'm gonna turn you around and show you. It's a two for one special, if you will. And like I mentioned, if you're on a limited space, this stuff really does make a difference. So you guys can see here, I have a good amount of space left between the end of my bed and where I plant this. Now my cucumbers aren't gonna get bushy. I'm pruning off anything that's not fruit bearing. So what happens is this is gonna be really kind of clean open. I'm now gonna be able to utilize all of this space to interplant another crop. Now, bear with me, intercropping, interplanting, it's nothing uh, to be intimidated or scared by. All it means is where you are planting two or more crops or variety in the same bed or space. So what that means is where I've got these cucumbers on the inside, I now can intercrop, interplant another variety on the outside or even on the direct inside between my main two rows. Some of the things that we have interplanted with would be, you know, baby spinach, different baby greens and lettuces even done some radishes and root vegetables because they are going to specifically the radish they're going to produce so quickly they're one of those like 30 day seed to harvest and so for me I can easily get a round of radish in here before my cucumbers are even at a point to where this interplanting is going to infect each other so my you know thing here is if you really want to max out your yields part of it is variety like I mentioned these are Katrina cucumbers they are greenhouse varieties. They're parthenocarpic, which means they only produce female flowers. So they're self-pollinating themselves, which is really great too. So they're a really high producing variety that are a hybrid. I get them from Johnny Seeds. But when I choose the right varieties and I implement the right trellising techniques, what would yield me X amount is now gonna yield me twice the amount just because I changed two things because I bought a different seed and I chose to trellis a different way. Now I'm certainly not hating on the arch trellis. I think if you're just looking for the aesthetic beauty in a garden, you're gonna see arch trellises in my raised bed garden all day long. But this high tunnel needs to produce me a lot of food, not only food for my family, but food that I'm selling to my community. And so I have to implement these professional growing techniques to really make sure that I'm maximizing yield in a small space. So if you also wanna max out your small space, I really encourage you guys to try this umbrella technique. It is a fan favorite here, but thank you all for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you soon.